Hello there. I am Dr. Zakir Hussain, Senior E&D Consultant. The topic for today is Inverted Papilloma. So, this topic we will see in two parts. Part 2 is mainly concerned with treatment. So, the rest of the uh, description or detail we will discuss in part 1. So, Inverted Papilloma is a benign condition means if you ask me is it a cancer? No, it is not cancerous but the possibility of it becoming a cancer is very high. It is a benign condition and it usually affects the nose, nasal cavity mainly, that is a common sight. The why I am giving so much of importance to this topic is because the recurrence rate even after surgery is very very high that is 70 percentage and the chances of it the chances of it turning malignant is very high that is 10, 10 percentage. So, inverted papilloma is a benign but locally aggressive tumor, tumor is nothing but a swelling that grows inwards into the underlying tissue or bone and it is postulated that human papilloma virus has got a role to play with this. It is common to it is common mainly in male genta at the ratio of 3 is to 1 when you compare with males, males with females and it is common between the age group of 30 to 50. The common presentation will be the patient says that he gives us a history of uh, rhinosinusitis of uh, nasal block, headache, nasal discharge which is going on for a long time and on examination we will find a polyp like this in the nose on usually on the both on both sides and when he undergoes surgery and the bio, biopsy report is it will be reported as he has got sinusinusitis, rhinosinusitis and he has got inverted papilloma too. So, that will be the common presentation. Now, the second presentation will be same patients uh, similar complaint that he gives a, his patient gives a history of uh, sinusitis and he says of late I get nasal bleeding on one side and nasal block of the same side and occasionally headache. This is the second presentation. So, when we do a nasal endoscopy we can see a polyp which is reddish in color. See the usual sinusitis case the polyps will be silvery glistening in color it does not bleed on touch. But here in a case of inverted papilloma it will be reddish, friable and it bleeds on touch. This is a photograph which is taken in one patient and this is one more patient. See both of the cases you can see it is reddish, friable and usually bleeds on the touch. Now I will show you a video, endoscopy video where the polyp can be seen occupying almost 70 percentage of the right side nasal cavity and as I have already mentioned it is reddish in color and you can see the bleeding spots too. This is a proven case of inverted papilloma. This is the endoscopy finding. Now coming to the investigation, the main diagnosis for the main diagnosis for the definite diagnosis we need biopsy which is usually done perioperatively and before operation we like to do a CT scan with contrast to the nasal cavity and paranasal sinus. It will show specific changes along with that we will have some bone destruction of the concerned nasal cavity and sometimes you can find focal hyperostosis means the little bit of growth of the bone from the walls of the sinus or nasal cavity which shows the site of origin of the tumor. So, this is a video of the CT scan, usually the sinuses are black in color, here inverted papilloma it is gray in color this side right side and here inside you can see some depositions too. The right side is involved in this condition. Now, I will show you a still also, same patient here you see hypodensity. And in another view you can see one sp particular spot which I have marked. This is a spot where there is hyperostosis means in this patient the swelling has the inverted papilloma the origin of site of origin is this point focal hyperostosis 
I'll show you a video of the same. This is a spot. So per operatively, I had to remove this part also. The same spot you can see here. It's in the anterior wall or the anterior lateral wall of the maxillary sinus. It's a recurrence case. But usually the common site is nasal cavity. This is a MRI and it's not must that every patient should undergo MRI. CT scan will be more than enough. So, the first part video inverted papilloma, we had discussed about in short about the definition, the occurrence, the common presentation and the uh, examination finding and investigation. Please do watch the part 2 for the treatment. Thank you.